Welcome to the Propreneur Podcast, where we help practice owners become better entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Dino Watt. And welcome once again, everybody, to the Propreneur Podcast. Excited to have you here again for another day where we're going to help you be more proactive, productive, and profitable inside of your business by sharing with you the best practices possible out there and having amazing guests that just are open books to you about how you can improve everything in your business. My name is Dino Watt, and thank you so much for sharing this podcast with your friends and your colleagues out in the orthodontic industry. I was just mentioning, uh, just I think in the last podcast, where we were at the Orthopreneur Summit and had was just so grateful for so many people that came up to me, doctors that came up saying, I listen to your podcast all the time. Thank you for giving us the information that you do. And my uh, newsletter is the same thing. So that just really means a lot to me. I really, really appreciate it. And today is no exception. Today is actually something that I was surprised we have not had this company on our podcast yet. Over 110 episodes, we've still, we haven't had them on. I'm shocked at that. But I've gotten to know this company over the last couple of months very well. And I'm super impressed with what they're doing. And I'm excited to bring them to you today. We're talking all about Gage with the CEO, Ryan Monahan. Ryan, thank you for being on the show. Thanks, Dino. Appreciate it. It's great yeah. to have this opportunity. Thanks a lot. It's, it's nice to do this when we're not on the road, right? Where we're at yeah. our own homes <laughs> or offices. And yeah. Like, well, yeah, as you know, you're on the road just like I have been. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a reprieve now before it fires back up in November. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, uh, Ryan, one of the things we do on this show at the very beginning is always ask people their stories. I believe stories connect people uh, across the, the every divide. So tell us your story about how you got into this space. Uh, what were you doing before? What inspired you to want to do this? Tell us the whole story. Sure, absolutely. Well, I've been in the dental ortho space for like the last 16 years. So I've, uh, I've been big business uh, prior to coming to Gage, which is, uh, you know, more of a smaller uh, company in the orthodontic space. So I was at 3M on the dental side. Oh. I was a marketing manager there, then went out to be a regional sales manager in California. Uh, so it was about seven and a half years uh, there at 3M. And then I moved over to Ormco. So that was my foray into orthodontics. And I was running their North American sales group. Uh, out of uh, Southern California, uh, lived in Sacramento, but commuted down there. And then I was their global VP of, uh, of, of marketing for a couple of years. So I was about four and a half years at Ormco. Uh, through that opportunity, uh, I met Mary Beth Kirkpatrick, who is the founder of Gage. And we were doing a couple of programs uh, with Gage through, through Ormco, as far as just looking at um, industry trends, things like that, and being able to enhance um, some of the things that the practices can do better to run their practices more efficiently. Um, and one thing led to another and I had an opportunity, um, you know, she, she has built Gage over the last 10 years. She is a consultant with Impact 360, um, been in the industry for about 30, 35 years. Um, she wanted uh, me to come in and just, you know, see what I could do as far as, uh, you know, continuing to build the company. And so I've been at Gage now for a little bit over four years. And over that four years, um, you know, we've been able to uh, look at the product, take the product, revamp the product, rewrite the product, um, and really, you know, hopefully get it in front of a lot more, uh, you know, doctors uh, than it had been in the past. Um, you know, we continue to, to see growth and see value and in, in how we're helping practices. And so um, it's been a really great ride. And it, it's kind of funny, my career path, I started off as more of a finance analytics guy uh, working at Intel and Ernst & Young, um, did a career switch over to marketing and strategy. And it's kind of fun how I found an industry that I truly love, with, which is orthodontics, but then being able to bring it back full circle to data analytics, uh, where I feel I have a strong suit has been a, a great passion of mine and a lot of fun over these last four years. So but that's my you journey. Always, have you always been like a, a data geek? Because, man, that's where I kind of <laughs> my eyes glass over quite a bit. And it's like, all right, narrow it down for me. Give me the, the, the short version of this. But it seems like you like to get in the weeds a little bit. Well, I don't know if the words. I hope it's not geek, but um, I, I do like uh, <laughs> I do like the analytics. Geek is a popular I, good thing nowadays. Not when we were I guess, growing I up. Guess, <laughs> I guess it is. Uh, but I, I do like the analytics. It, it, it does drive me. Um, you know, so I can stay high level and hopefully paint a picture for somebody that doesn't want to get into the weeds. But I can also get in the weeds and find that needle in a haystack too. So. I feel like I've been able to build the skill set on both of those, but um, yeah, data data is really fun for me. So uh, call it a crazy habit, but it is what it is. So how interesting is it though that I mean, I know sometimes when I will just show doctors, you know, data. This is just the way it is. 
that there's still a, like an almost not an argument, but a pushback to the data. Well, it's different here or, well, I don't know if that's totally right on it. Do you get that a lot? Yeah, every now and then. I mean, data doesn't lie necessarily. I mean, data is data. It doesn't lie. But there's there's definitely a story to explain the data and certain you know, things that are out of your control can explain certain nuances to the data. But at the end of the day, data doesn't lie. And, you know, what we try to do at Gage is try to simplify that, visualize that and make that much easier for a doctor to digest than what would normally be the typical uh, uh, way that they would look at data. Well, you had mentioned Mary Beth Kirkpatrick and obviously in her uh, role as a consultant. Can you tell us a little bit about what inspired her to do to start creating Gage? Yeah. So um, great, great question. She, she was in these offices and in order to just kind of diagnose the problem, she would have to go into the practice management systems and pull a myriad of reports and analyze and download and, you know, look and, and scratch and turn up, turn, turn over rocks. Um, and so it was her idea to say, Hey, if we could just automate this and visualize this to where we could create, and, and she collaborates with all the other consultants in the industry as well, which is, is a wonderful thing. I mean, they obviously they all compete with each other, but they're all, you know, kind of friends with each other as well and working towards, you know, making the, the profession better. Um, but what she did is, is, is try to automate that to where, hey, I can nightly get an upload of all of my data that, of what I did the previous day, plus the aggregate for the month. And I can see very, very quickly where my practice is winning or losing based on the key financial operational metrics that a consultant would come into a practice and want to diagnose and want to help with. So, so that's the real benefit and the real power of why Gage was created and what the value that Gage brings is that that automation um, to be able to really help diagnose your practice very, very quickly through visualization. Um, in addition, you know, what the other features that have been built into Gage is where, you know, we do, we do have a, uh, thousands of doctors that are subscribing to the uh, platform. And so they can all benchmark themselves against each other in aggregate. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a very powerful tool, depending upon, um, you know, where you're at in your practice and your location, how are you doing versus your peer set in that space by, by location and also by practice type, which is great. Um, and then the data, I mean, there's about 80 different KPIs that are pulled. And so not every doctor is going to look, go look at every, every single KPI. Right. Um, but what, the way she set it up, the, the vision for Gage and the way that we look at it is we try to follow the patient journey through the practice from a data standpoint. So Gage picks up the story when the patient calls the practice. And so at that point, you know, we're starting to track, you know, as the patient is making that initial contact, you're starting to build a relationship. Then they come in for the exam. And then if they're ready to start or they're ready to go in the observation pool, we track all that. And then if they're a phase one start or phase two, or they actually go into a start. So we track that whole consumer conversion waterfall from beginning call to start. And then once they're in treatment, then we have all of the metrics that, that uh, track the treatment efficiency as well. And so how quickly are you finishing a patient in treatment efficiently? Uh, how, many, how many appointments is it taking? How, how many patients are you overestimated completion date? those types of things, uh, what's your average value per visit. So it really gives you a soup to nuts look at the, that entire patient journey from when they call your practice to when they actually get debanded and out of your practice and how efficiently are you doing that. And we have a handful of models along the way. I mentioned one just a minute ago, the consumer conversion waterfall, where we call that the leaky bucket. And there's doctors that are losing you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars just because they're not necessarily aware yep. of the numbers. And that goes back to, you know, why Gage was created is that sure, you can go pull all this information out of your practice management system, but there's going to be a, a rigorous analysis that has to be done in order to actually get to these uh, conclusions where we have done, we do all the math for you and the visualizations for you to be able to lead you down that path to show you very, very quickly if you do have a leak in your bucket, because those can be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, or are you sure. treating a patient inefficiently? Because that can be worth, that's worth money to your practice as well. So there's a lot of data now that's being talked about. Orthopreneurs covered it a lot about treatment efficiency and what's that's costing your practice as well. So um, it's just, it's a great tool, I believe, to, to get you know, the doctor very, very quickly up to speed on what's going on in his or her practice. So when somebody says, okay, well, I have reports already, how is this going to, you know, um, I guess, systematize or um, really bring down my workload? Because I already have these reports, like you said, I could pull them. And, you know, a lot of doctors are very analytical and like the data part of things and can look at those numbers. How is this shortcutting their success? 
it's an efficiency tool. So you won't spend as much time doing all of those analytics. And then it's also put into a format where, you know, Mary Beth and her consultant colleagues have collaborated on the best way to look at your practice. So not only will it save you time, but it'll also put it in a visual way that you can see where you're at. And you can't do that with a raw data downloaded report. It just, it, it can't be done without analysis. The other piece with Inside Gauge is that you can also set goals. And so those goals will progress on a daily basis as to where you are within the month and how you're doing against those goals. In addition, um, we color code it as well to show, are you up, are you down versus prior period? So that goes yellow, red, green, like a stoplight chart. Um, so as, you, as you're looking at one screen, you're able to capture um, so much information and so much data that's automatically produced for you that it saves you so much time in having to pull reports, do analysis, and then draw your own conclusions. So that's the real benefit and the real value of Gage. In addition to being able to benchmark yourself with an aggregate pool, which you wouldn't be able to do at, on your own without being part of the community. Um, and then also that goal setting too, which automatically is laced into the, into the system as well. When you're talking about uh, comparing yourself on an aggregate poll, you can choose what uh, area, you can choose what other yeah. offices, like how do you decide who you're kind of, if I'm an office with, you know, six team members and then comparing it to an office with 50, it, am I choosing those or is it just like everybody's yeah. pulled into a poll? We have four delineations. And so we have a single doctor practice, which those for the most part, a lot of times are calibrated similarly. Mm -hmm. We have a single doctor with associate. Then we have a multiple doctor practice and a multiple doctor with associates. So those are the four delineations. And then we also have eight regions which are mapped to the AAO constituency regions. So that's the, so you could pull by the SAO, a single doctor practice. So not only can you pull by a region, but you can also pull by practice type. Plus we also have that at the USA level. Um, so you can pull it at the USA level as well if, if you want to just benchmark yourself against the entire US and, and by practice type. So there's a couple ways to cut the data. So in some ways, it'd be kind of a really interesting experiment for people who do like the data to be able to say, well, in general, I'm just going to compare myself against like, you know, like versus like. But sure. I also can say, well, in general, as a as an industry, how am I doing? Right? Exactly. Where am I setting myself? Because in some ways, that kind of gamifies it. So you can look at sure. it and go like, oh, how can I set my goals based on this? If I want to grow into being a practice that has, you know, a, an, an associate, well, yeah. what do I need? to get to those numbers. I remember Chris Benson doing a very great uh, presentation at the Lightforce conference about, hey, don't even think about getting an associate or hiring another team member until you're hitting these numbers. And you can do that based on what you see on Gage. So if I was a doctor that was lacking in that, but wanting another team member, feeling like my team is saying, hey, we need new team members, which they say all the time, right? We need, exactly. we need more people. Um, but to be able to just either doing it or not doing it based upon, okay, well, but for a company that has, let's just say 10 employees and we have eight, we need to be here in order to justify that expenditure. Absolutely. And we've also added just recently to Gage is an integration with um, your accounting system. So we have QuickBooks and Xero. Oh, so nice. now you can also funnel in your spending Pareto in addition to the operational metrics. And then we mix those together. So now we can look at net profit per clinical day worked. We can look at, um, and, and Benson talks about uh, collections per full-time equivalent, right? Do you need to get right. to a certain level before you start adding teammates? We can look at marketing ROI when we look at how much am I spending to get a new patient to call me, to come nice. in for an exam and to get to a start. Um, we also, and then with that, that spending Pareto, and, and it's a standard spending Pareto that we've benchmarked with, um, with Benson's group, with Kane Waters, with McGill Hill, so we put together, you know, a standardized orthodontic PL. It compares you on, you know, what kind of spend are you doing as a percent of collections? So once again, you can benchmark that. Are you spending more or less on your staff? Are you spending more or less on marketing? Those types of things. Um, I know a lot of doctors put expenses below the line. We track that as well. So you can see a true PL, but you can also see with your doctor expenses and all that. And then, you know, what's the total bottom line there? Um, right. So we've tried to think about all of that um, and combining those operational metrics that we've always had engaged with now pulling in your spending Pareto and giving you just some more insights into how you can make your practice more profitable. It, it does create a mock PL for you. And then it also shows you your spending Pareto um, areas. So if it's uh, staff's expense, marketing expense, facility expense, clinical supply expense, 
those types of things. And, and it puts it in a Pareto and shows you, you know, how this is where the industry is from a percent of collections profitability. How far off are you from that or how are you tracking towards that? So once again, just leveraging all of that Pareto data and benchmarking it and being able to compare yourself, it does the same thing that it does on the operational side. That's awesome. Can you give us an example of an office that, you know, was, was trying to do it on their own, right? And, and felt they were doing just fine and struggling a little bit, or maybe not having uh, as full uh, transparency as they were hoping. And then they were able to engage with Gage and it helped them in any way. Yeah. Uh, not, not mentioning any specific names. Um, right. Yeah, but just uh, we have a handful of offices. And the, the, the cool part about Gage as well is that when we engage with you, no pun, to start off, we actually load in two to three years of your historical data out of your practice management system. So we can see that inflection point of what did you do pre-Gage? What did you do post-Gage? Um, right. And so through our onboarding process, I mean, we do a total data evaluation, data analysis based on the data that's in your practice management system. And then as we connect and map all of your data into Gage, uh, then our team is training the, the orthodontist and their staff on what to be looking at uh, and how to set goals and, and all of the things that go into the Gage system. Um, so then, you know, with, with a handful of these practices, uh, you know, we believe like what gets measured gets improved. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see big corporations all over the place. Like, I mean, even, even our, our small company, I mean, we have weekly KPIs that we're looking at, you know, are we on pace to hit our goals? Um, you know, the big corporations obviously do it at a much, a much more stringent level. So this, this allows you as well to see your data. And I go back to um, just knowing that, okay, I had a hundred patients call me and only 80 came in right there is like, okay, so now I drill into that ex uh, exam to new patient call ratio. And I go back and I say, okay, what are we doing here? Should we be changing, you know, some of the protocols? That's another area where Mary Beth and her team would dive in and say, okay, there's a leak there. Let's go in and let's go figure out, you know, what's our protocols and processes there. Right. So those are examples of where, you know, offices have been able to quickly see where there are opportunities in their practice and then create new processes or systems and then be able to um, change those around. The other great thing about the practices that have leveraged it is that you can give access by role within the practice. So depending upon what the role is within the practice, that person can see only the data that's pertinent to their role. Oh. And then that gives them the opportunity to use those at morning stand up huddle meetings and talk about daily goals. And so if you're, you know, you're a TC, you want to get so many um, closes that day. If you're on, if you're in marketing, you might want to see the phone ring that much or more. So those types of things where you can set goals at, at a, at a, you know, basically functional level, um, and then those folks can actually me measure and manage those. And, and so we've really seen practices that have taken that on and, and actually um, delegated that out to their staff at those certain levels that they've been really, really successful with the tool. Wow, that's awesome. Do yeah. um, when you're talking to uh, team members, when they are able to look at these, especially your managers, your office managers, uh, your clinical coordinators, uh, are they pretty successful at being able to just to kind of implement this, see this and now see the black and white? And, you know, again, I'm going to talk about overcoming the emotional side of things of like, well, you know, but we really worked hard yet. The numbers are showing a little different. Yeah. And, and it, it goes back to the, the training and the engagement. And so there's 80 different KPIs and, you know, the average, wow. the average um, call it individual that works in the orthodontic community is not trained on, data analytics, right? So that's, that's where we're trying to streamline that and make that more visual. So you don't have to spend a ton of time on it or when you see it, it's very easy to digest. So the way we start is, is look at two or three different metrics and really get to know what they are and, and how they weave into your practice and what impacts them in your practice. And then once you can master those, then you move on to two to three others. So if you try to bite it all off, you're going to say, this is overwhelming and I'm just not going to use yeah. it. Yeah, I'm not going to use it. So um, and, and we've created the AE as a function of, you know, we have a consultant portal as well. So the consultants go sure into, that. That's cool. yeah, yeah and, they, and they're able to, to look at uh, the gauge data for their practices, you know, provided the practice authorizes that for them. Um, you know, so the consultants love all of the data and then, you know, clinicians will love certain aspects of the data and certain functions with an office will learn, will like certain functions of the data. So it's just one of those things where depending upon the function, um, you know, they'll have access to, you know, the information they need, but we, we really like to start off and do it in bite-sized pieces so they can start to utilize that on a regular basis and not just have it be so overwhelming that it doesn't get utilized. 
I was going to mention that about the part of it. I think that's such an interesting piece that uh, I don't, I, I personally am not aware of a ton of other softwares out there that allow the consultants to be able to look in. So if one of my doctors has gauge, I can go in and I can just, I can help him analyze certain things and we can focus on specifics as opposed to generalities, or we can go general. Like, I think it's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it, from a consultant perspective, you know, a lot of the, you, you guys that are consultants, I mean, are looking at this stuff and, and using it more as um, predictive indicators as well. And like, Hey, this is, this is out of whack. Let's pick up the phone, have a phone call and say, you know, Hey, we might need to work on this just as yeah. a function of you guys being able to see it, understand it and um, see that ahead of time before, you know, it becomes a major problem in the, in the, in the, uh, in the office. Yeah, I think it's great. Uh, can you tell us anything that's going to be coming in the future for Gage without, you know, giving anything away, but what are, what can people look forward to with the growth of Gage? Because it has been growing quite substantially over the last couple of years. Sure. Yeah, we just launched our, uh, our, our Forms product. So Forms is, you know, I mean, a lot of practice management systems have Forms. Um, but we've got some Forms where we've actually taken uh, some of the Impact 360 uh, forms that they utilize with their consultants and automated those and put those into the system. And so just from an automatic standpoint from forms, uh, you know, we have the ability to text and email uh, those forms, uh, you know, and so it gives us a great opportunity just to kind of further, um, you know, expand our footprint into the practice with those forms and being able to leverage the uh, consulting forms that we have just provides a little bit more customization to those forms. In addition, they can also customize their own forms as well, which is great. So, um, you know, that's something that we're really looking forward to. And then uh, we're, we're, we're also building in functionality just for like automatic sign up and then being able to access just kind of their accounts and everything within the tool as well. So that's something that, you know, kind of goes on the side right now, but this is going to be something where they can fully engage um, with Gage and, and sign up, add features, take off features um, and, and just understand exactly, you know, kind of where they're at with the, their membership with us. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we do have, and it's just been launched, but it's uh, we call it our executive program. Our executive program does have access to the um, accounting system within the practice. And so if you have QuickBooks or Xero, those are the two that we have integrations with, which covers you know, a lot of the orthodontic community. And then the other tool that um, we have is a projections tool. So imagine loading in all of your data for how you run your practice. So you have production collection, you have new patient calls, exams, starts, starts by type, which is bracket or wire or liners, and then saying, okay, next, next year, um, I wanna grow 10% production. But what does that mean as far as how many new patient phone calls do I need to get? How many starts? How many exams do I need to get? So it's really, it's a slider tool that allows you to project the future. And it basically allows you to vary the different elements that are all interrelated based on your historical performance. So now maybe you want to go and drive a higher percentage of aligners uh, in your practice. You just want that to be a bigger share of chair in your practice. So now you can move those aligners up to a certain level, lock everything else and say, okay, what is that going to do as far as cascade my, my start mix within my practice? So it's a really cool tool that helps you goal set, but it also helps you kind of project the future um, with what, uh, is out there in the future. And then in addition to our, since we do have our, um, our, our spending Pareto through our overhead account, it also has a budgeting tool. So where you can actually set a budget by line item, and then it'll track that budget on a daily basis with Engage. So I think the question was asked, we were just at the, uh, the GLAO and uh, Chris Benson was up on stage and he was asking, how many orthodontists have, actually have a budget that you follow, right? And, you know, there wasn't a lot of hands that went up. So um it, it is a lucrative business model, but I mean, having a budget, you know, really can, can drive more to the bottom line and that profitability. So being able to have that type of visibility um, is also a new feature um, that we're going to have. So we're excited about kind of where that's at and, um, you know, more, more continues to be on the horizon as we move into 2022 and uh, we're excited about the roadmap. Well, speaking of the predictability side of things, uh, when you look at, for example, I'll, I'll go back to the conversation with Chris, where he was talking about, um, which everyone can see that adult liners or adult case treatment has been on the rise, but for him to be able to look at and see the data and see what's the predictable data or predictive data to say, okay, well, you know, when we're looking at May of 2022 is pretty much where we're going to see a continual, you can now as a doctors take that data 
and make sure your marketing is based around that and be more specific and rifle focused with your marketing as opposed to a shotgun approach, which most people do. Absolutely. Uh, I think for me, that was the big aha when I was sitting in that audience just going, wow, how many doctors are not realizing right now what he just said should be the push of your orthodontic practice over the next eight to 12 months, because that's where the industry is going, or that's where the community is going, right. if you will. Yeah. And we got feet, speaking of the adult population, um, we saw pre-pandemic that we would see adult starts grow at about 6% per year. Mm -hmm. And then after the reopening over the last 12 months, it's grown at 24%. Amazing. So you think that's a 4X improvement. So, I mean, that's when I lecture too, that's my big, my big thing to the audience is that what is your adult strategy and how are you targeting um, these adults uh, in your practice? And so um, we actually got that story picked up by CNBC on the evening news, which was pretty oh, interesting cool to see. Yeah, with Shepard Smith. And uh, he had a whole Zoom effect uh, talk about adults and just, you know, staring at Zoom all yep. day and saying, hey, I need to get into that orthodontist. And so, we, you know, I know a line when they have made their announcements, they've talked a lot about that, but we really believe that, um, you know, that's driving the adults uh, population, but it's, it's, it's a significant increase that we've seen, especially with where we've seen orthodontics over the last 12 months be double digit production growth, which is unheard of, um, specifically over a long period of time. And adults are really helping drive that. So if you don't have an adult strategy, you're probably missing out on this growth curve. Yeah, you are. And there's, uh, I know there's doctors who are like, well, that's not really my forte. That's that we mm -hmm. like the kids, but man, you right now where we are business wise, you need to be going where the energy is going, the energy is yeah. going there. You know, it doesn't mean you abandon your kid's strategy. Just know that you need a strategy going for the adults as well. Yeah. Um, I think, I think it's crucial. I think that's yeah. great. And we have, um, you know, as far as targeting. So another one of our key products, we, we've had it for a couple of years, but we're continuing to refine it is our, our, our mapping product. And it's a geospatial mapping product where we can distill data down to the square mile and basically we're identifying personas that are coming into the marketplace and saying yes and saying no to orthodontic treatment. And then we have every household mapped to a persona type and it's based on the credit agencies. And you can actually go in there and you can um, do, find the lookalikes for the types of segmentation and profiles that are coming into your practice. And then not only do you know their address or physical address if you wanna do direct mail, but you can also uh, hook into their IP address and, and serve them up ads as well. So there's some cool technologies that we're dabbling with as far as, you know, extending, like I mentioned with Gage, we pick up the story when the orthodontist or when the patient calls the orthodontic practice. Now right. we're looking to help the orthodontist find the patients in the marketplace. Yeah. Now we're not a marketing agency. We partner yeah. with a handful of them in the, in, in the industry, but we have the data that can feed the marketing agencies um, to really help target those promotion, those that social media and those promotional opportunities. So it's a really cool um, technology we're working on there as well. It's very cool because as my marketer brain kicks into that going, man, every doctor's marketing director, or if they're going to hire a marketing director, which they should, should have access to this and be using this data right. to geotarget their specific area. I mean, people talk about how amazing Facebook is because you can geotarget in that, but here you are in your own uh, data subsets here, your own ability to say, okay, where in my area, what's, what's the likelihood or what's the characteristic of somebody to buy? Let's target those people. That's huge. If you think about it the right way, unfortunately, I don't think a lot of people do, but those people that are listening to the show right now, you should be getting on your marketing directors. You should be making sure that they understand the power of being able to, in some ways, cherry pick your patients. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's huge. Yeah, wow. the, seg the segmentation. I mean, we, we have the yes, no ratios by persona type in a practice. So, and then there's also talk tracks that different personas want to be talked to different ways. And so yes. we educate the office on all of that as well. And then we're even working on a new technology that we have with a partner where you're pinging the cell phone. So you can geofence uh, an orthodontic office, potentially your competitor or all the dental offices, and you can geofence those. And then as cell phones come in and out of those offices every day, it's creating profiles of, of the types, the personas that are what? coming in and out of those. And then now you have their IP addresses and you can go serve them up. So basically you're, you're, you're finding those patients that, you know, Hey, they go to the dentist most of the time. They're probably a candidate for orthodontics at some point, or they're, they're potentially shopping my competitor. You know, is there some way that they can be sitting in that competitive office and I can serve them up an ad for my practice. 
I mean, so there's a lot of different things you can wow. do with the technology and the targeting that, and, and, I, and that goes back to the whole marketing ROI piece that I talk about as well. Yes. I'm very big on, you know, I'm, I'm a marketer by trade. I've, I've been in marketing and marketing is not always black and white as far as measuring it. Um, mm -hmm. But this data is allowing us to get much more focused in on the ROI. So I'm spending X number of dollars. And I'm getting X number of return based on leads. Yep. So I always encourage practices that, you know, whatever agency you're working with, make sure that they can produce data that shows you, you know, what your dollar is being spent on versus just being, you know, shot into the wind and, and hoping it comes back, you know, in a patient. I a hundred thousand percent agree with that. I talk about this constantly where, where's your RO, where's your money? Where's the ROI coming from? Oh, we do all these t-shirts. As a matter of fact, the other night I, I run the Propreneur Network with a group of doctors and I, we were talking about um, different marketing capabilities. And the person who was the guest at it that day said, you know what, if you have a banner, you're kind of wasting money because you're not doing a call to action. You have no idea if people are doing stuff. And I said, whoa, 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 but what you can do is you can create a QR code and put that on the banner or put that on the flyer or put that on thing where they can zap it and get your free report on something and get, you can capture their information. The point is we're always, I'm always talking about like, look, if you don't know where your lead is coming from, you're like you said, throwing money against the wind, out, out into the wind and thinking, hopefully it'll come back to me. Yeah. And this is crucial. I wonder, I just have to put more thought into this, but now you made me think about like patient appreciation parties and how to, really zero in on those and understand the ROI of that based upon who actually comes to your patient appreciation parties, if they're bringing a guest or not, how successful that event was. Ooh, even going back, even going back to your QR code, right? Is there a way that you can capture the lead? Because once they fill out the information for whatever, like the generic braces versus aligners report or, or right. education on that, you now own that lead and then you can start dripping you know, marketing materials to them over time. And then, you know, when they come in that they're from that specific event and tie that yeah. back to your ROI spend there. And that's, so that's the big thing. That's like a lead magnet. It comes in and you're able to own that lead then. Yep. So, yep. Absolutely. Good. Holy moly. We could probably talk about this for hours. This is great. See, you've made me enjoy the, the, the data side of stuff. <laughs> well, there you go. So I it's love fun. it when it when it's like compiled. It's all the 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 big or the, all the little numbers that I'm like, how do you add that up and put that together where? But that's for that's for bigger brains than mine. So that's why uh, we try to do that for you. We try to do all that. For that's you. right. Just put it all together. <laughs> that's what I love. That's what yeah. I love about it. Well, sweet. Well, thank you so much, Ryan, for all of your information here at Gage. We're going to ask you. We got to the part of our show where we talk our ten. Or sorry, six questions that we ask every single uh, person on the show. Are you ready to play? Uh, yes, uh, we'll see, but yes. <laughs> uh, they're pretty simple, I promise. Uh, okay, what's the most expensive thing that you think private practice owners are missing in their practice? The most expensive thing? Yep. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of, there's a lot of leak from the uh, new patient call to the exam to the start, I think through that whole funnel. There's right. hundreds of thousands of dollars that are being missed. And so, you know, your practice may not be missing that, but the biggest thing I want to educate on is that you need, you need to at least know what your leaky bucket is. I yes. think, yeah, from a data standpoint, that's it. And then, well, yeah, that's the biggest. So the other one's treatment efficiency and doing treatment overruns. So <laughs> that's, that's huge. And that's I love huge. that they talked about that so much at OP this year. It was like, yeah. you guys, let's get that efficiency down. Every dollar, every time they're going a week or a month over, you're, you're losing money. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Talk about leaky bucket for sure. Yeah. Every um, extra appointment costs you money. That's right. Uh, what is a book that you believe every practice owner should be reading? Oh, this is it. Um, I like it's this is day one and it's by Drew Dudley. Okay. So it's a practical guide to leadership that matters. Um, I've got a lot out of it just because it's about um, just looking at every single day as day one, regardless of what's happening to you in the past or the future. It has you focus and be present on the current day ahead. And then there's just a lot of other life skills that are in there as well and leadership skills that are in there as well. So that, that one I like. This is day one. That's great. Thank you for that recommendation. Okay. Well, speaking of books in my book, The Practice Rx, I talk a lot about how team culture and team performance is the foundation for business growth. What do you see as the biggest challenge that private practice owners are facing with their teams and their office culture? Well, I, I, that's a good one. Um, I think, you know, is it, is it turnover, turnover in, in, in the staff? I mean, I, I've seen, I know, especially during the COVID period of time, 
Um, I think that's, that's been, it's been harder to hire, um, harder to retain. And I, I mean, obviously I think you're dealing with, um, you know, there's a lot of different personalities too. And so being able to juggle, um, you know, just the, the different personalities at the different functions and, and where they come in from the outside world uh, to come to work on that day and make sure that, you know, everybody can be on the same page moving forward. Uh, I think that's, you know, one of the biggest challenges. And I think that's not one practices, but any organization is because everybody sees the world through a different lens. And so, you know, as a, as a clinician who is the CEO of the practice, um, you know, do you have that empathy? Do you have that ability to understand that, you know, people do see the world a little bit differently and you have to be able to adjust and adapt and, uh, you know, kind of guide and, and shepherd everybody in the right direction, um, you know, just based on the way they see the world a little differently. Absolutely. That's a great answer. But yeah. Well, question number four is always, how do people reach out to you and get to know more about Gage and maybe take a, a spin, a, a test drive with you? Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I just encourage you to go to our website, gauge.com. It's spelled G-A-I-D-G-E.com. There you'll be able to uh, sign up for a demo. You'll be able to understand exactly what we do, uh, read some articles, blogs, things like that. And uh, we've also got a Facebook page as well, Gauge users, um, that you can get a lot of information on as well. So that's the way we that's awesome. interact. Uh, what's the best advice that you've ever received in life or business? Be humble. Mm -hmm. Be humble. Nice. What's the best resource or tool every private practice owner should be using right now to grow their practice? <laughs> I don't want to have a, this be a promotion, but um, yeah, it's, that's no, totally fine. No, I mean, I, I think you need to know your numbers. So if it's yeah. gauge you use or if it's something else, I mean, I, I think, you know, in any practice, you've got to have the ability to know where you stand and you have to have a scorecard. And so however you do that, if you're pulling reports and doing analysis, if you're using Gage, if you're doing it a different way, um, I just think you've got to spend time and effort and really understand that because the business model for orthodontics is extremely lucrative. Um, and, and I love it. And it's amazing. And it's a wonderful profession. Um, but I also believe that there's um, a lot of dollars that are being missed as a function of there's the, the business model is lucrative. That's why. Um, and so I think there's opportunities, um, you know, by looking at, you know, managing your numbers that uh, you can absolutely just improve the overall profitability of your practice. hundred uh, percent agree. You said earlier, you know, that you, whatever you measure gets improved, <laughs> right? And that's the, uh, and, and not measuring it definitely does not improve it. And unfortunately, because of that abundance that is out there in this industry, sometimes people are going to be like, well, you know, it'll all come out in the wash. Well, okay. You know, I don't have time for that. I'm so busy building my practice or I'm so busy doing this, that that's just like, well, I've got enough money to cover those bills. So it should be fine. Yeah. And exactly. then they get to that reckoning day of, well, maybe because they didn't keep those numbers well, you know, that golden parachute they thought was going to happen when they sell their practice, it's not as valuable as they thought. Yeah. We didn't even touch on this, but I firmly believe that when you can track, like you were talking about earlier, tracking the numbers of a couple of years before and all that, man, what a better opportunity and way to be able to go to a potential buyer of your practice sure. to say, here are all the numbers over the last, you know, five years, 10 years, 20 years that our black and white data. Yeah. That's and we've actually, I mean, with, with practices that are going through LOIs with DSOs, they've come to us to where we've just hooked up the data to their PMS so they could oh. actually do the diligence without having to pull the reports. So that's another service that we provide as well, where we, it's kind of more of a one-time fee, but you hook up the data and then get the data and turn it over to, uh, you know, the private equity group and they love it because that's it's awesome. organized and they can see the historical trends and all that kind of stuff. So that's so valuable. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, and thank you again so much for spending the time here with us. I'm so glad we got you on the show. Like I, like I said, we were in our pre-interview. I'm like, we've been on, you've been on the show before, right? I was surprised <laughs> that you weren't. So I'm super glad we got to do this and share this information with our listeners. And if you're out there listening right now, you know, remember that it is really about coming down to those numbers and knowing your numbers if you look at any type of, uh, I'm a big fan of Shark Tank, right? What's the first thing that they ask when they walk in there? What are your numbers? And you got to know your numbers as an entrepreneur. And it's not an easy thing always. And having something like Gage to help that become so much easier for you to do and execute on and the team members to execute on, that's really powerful. That's why I'm a big fan. And I, I'm really grateful for you guys sharing your, your, your passion and, and what you're doing for the industry. 
Awesome. Well, we appreciate it. And thank you so much for having me on the show. And, you know, anytime I'll, I'll be willing to come back for sure. If you're willing to have me. So <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, everybody, thanks again for another great episode of the Propreneur podcast. And thank you for listening. Thank you for hopefully you took a lot of good notes. Reach out to Gage, see if they, they can help you out, which I totally believe they can with your practice and get those numbers in and just make your life a lot easier. As an entrepreneur, we go through so many different roller coaster emotions and things we have to do and different processes and programs and systems we have to do. To get one of these out of your life and out of your way and make it just streamlined and easy, I mean, that's just what I would highly recommend you do. Well, until next time, everybody, as you know, our goal here is to help you be more pro proactive, productive, and profitable in all areas of your life and business. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks so much again for listening to the Propreneur Podcast. We really appreciate your support. If you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you do so. Also, if you feel like you might be a good fit for our podcast as a guest or know somebody who you think would be, go ahead and email us at dino at dinowatt.com. Again, thanks for support. We'll see you on the next episode.